Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to write a two-column proof using the segment addition theorem. So when writing a two-column proof, basically what we want to do is take all the information that we have and then put it down on a sheet of paper. Or in my case, I'm going to be writing it down on a board. So typically, you're usually going to be given some information that's going to be written out, or you're going to be given a figure. In this example, I'm, going to, I'm actually given both. I'm given a figure as well as some information. So let's take the information. On a two-column proof, what we have is we have two parts. We have a statement and a reason. And the reason is kind of like your justification. Okay. So what we want to do is take all the information that we have put it down on, our, you know, on the board and kind of organize it, and then kind of see, all right, how is that going to help us now prove? Because the goal of a proof is to be able to prove that AB is equal to 2AM. Even though we might know, hey, I know this is true, I know that it works, we got to provide step-by-step -step justifications that, are, that order us to come to that conclusion. We just can't say, well, I know it's true, and that's you know, <laughs> QED. It's all done. Uh, so we're going to have a statement and then a reason. So the first and easiest statement to always do is start with what you know. You know, get your building blocks. What is the bait? What is everything you're given? So in this example, um, you know, we have a figure, and we don't need to write, you know, that you know we have a length a b is segment. You know, that's given. But let's write down some of the information that we're given. And you can see from this point they give us that m is the midpoint of a b. So that is a great thing to write down as a given. So I'm just going to write m is the midpoint of AB. Okay? And why do we know that M is the midpoint of AB? Because it is given. So we're just going to write given. Now, they wouldn't tell you that M is the midpoint unless they wanted you to use the definition of midpoint somehow or that the fact that we have a midpoint somehow. So we got to think, you know, what does the midpoint mean? Why do we why would they tell us about the midpoint? Um, and how could we use that to prove to, you know, help us use that in our proof? Well, the main thing of the, you know, of the midpoint, remember a midpoint is basically a point that's in between two other points. And if those two points are on a line, then that midpoint kind of you know, bisects that line, basically cuts that line in half. So therefore, both two segments are now going to be equal. So we have this nice long segment here, AB. Since M is the midpoint, that now makes both those two segments congruent, equal in measure. So now what I can say is um, AM is equal to the length of MB. And that is because that's the definition. A lot of times we can just write definition as DF, but I'll write the whole thing out. Definition of midpoint. Okay, So we have the definition of the midpoint. Um, now, the next thing is, you know, what else can we do? Now, I started off by saying we're going to use the segment addition theorem. And that's going to be kind of the highlight of what we'll be doing here. Um, you know, sometimes you might be using it, sometimes you might not. Um, but I think it's a good way to start. If you're kind of stuck, well, we know that whenever you have a segment, if you have a point um, that breaks up that segment, the sum of the two parts that you broke your segment up to are always going to add up to the whole segment, right? It doesn't matter, you know, if I take a segment, it doesn't matter how many times I cut it up, the sum of all those little parts is still going to equal my whole segment. And that's basically what the segment addition theorem states. So I can write AM plus MB is equal to AB. And that is my segment addition theorem. OK, so now we have all this information. We've written down basically everything we know, as well as everything that we can think of that would be important. Here comes the trick, the tricky part. How do we take all this information now and then write it into a, a justification, you know, a, a meaning that we can say that proves AB is equal to 2 times AM? Okay? So what that comes up with, the kind of tricky part, and it's going to happen over and over, and that's why we want to get practice in this, you to look at it. Um, you know, think about this. We're trying to get two AMs. We know that AM and MB are congruent, right? They're equal in measure. And so we could say that that's AM, and that's technically AM as well, right? So AM is equal to MB, which we said there. So if they're equal to each other, then it doesn't matter which one I use, right? I could substitute one for the other. And that's, gonna, that's what we're going to use for this next step is substitution. Rather than writing MB, there's no MB in my proof, right? You always want to look at what you're in. What are you trying to prove? And if you have a length that you're, that's not going to be in it, try to see how could you maybe eliminate it or you know, substitute it in for another value to help you with your proof. 
So what I can do is say AM plus AM. I don't need to write MB because MB is equal to AM. So AM plus AM is equal to AB. Why? Because I used substitution. I substituted, I substituted in the length of MB in for AM. Now I have um, AM plus AM, which is going to be 2 AM. So I can just write, you know, AB is equal to 2 AM, right? And then the reason, uh, you know, therefore I can just write simplify, okay? Um, and then we can just use my box to say my end proof, my proof is complete. Okay, um, you can also read write the other way and then you know switch it around if you want to go through those extra steps. Okay, so in the next one, uh, next example, we have a two column proof, so we automatically know. Well, let's just get our statement and reason. We know that's what we're going to be using, so let's write the statement and reason. And you know, a lot of times I get with students, you know, and they're having trouble with proofs, which you know I think many people have, you know, can feel uh, feel your pain in going through it. And one of the ways to just be like, well, I'm just going to get started with it. I know I'm going to have use two column proof. And let's just go and get started with writing down you know, what I'm given. I might not even know what all this stuff means, but I'm just going to write it down in my proof. So I'm going to say that line CE is congruent to line FE. I don't know why I keep on doing that. And I could say ED is congruent to EG. And why is all that true? Because it's given. All right. So now once I wrote it down there, let's actually see how is this actually going to make sense? How is this going to help me? And, and I, you know, writing this stuff down is great. You know, possibly it might give you some partial credit on a test or homework. But I, to me, it's helpful to visualize everything. So you know, I always like to, if, I, if it's in a book, I like to redraw kind of the figure. So therefore, I can write it and kind of visually see what is going on. So when we have segments that are um, congruent, that means they're equal in measure. So I'm going to use tick marks to show that they're congruent. So it says CE is equal to FE. Okay, and then ED is equal to EG. Okay, so how can we use this information now to our basic advantage? How can we, you know, simulate a lot of this information? Well, one thing that I kind of notice here is I know that again I've taken a segment and I've broken it apart. Over here we took a segment and we broke it up by using the midpoint. Well, here we're taking a segment and we're breaking it up by using an intersecting line. So therefore, we can use the segment addition theorem. Again, I don't know if that's going to help us or not. Um, obviously, by the title of this video, you know that it is going to help us. But when you're thinking of a problem that you don't have really any information for, you know, if you know that you have a segment that's being broken up, well, hey, you can write it down. Maybe it'll help you. Maybe it won't. But you got to at least try. You know, try to see if it can help you out. So let's go ahead and write a segment addition here. I, if, if I have this length CD, you can see that CD is being broken up by CE and ED. So I can say that the line CE um, plus uh, CE is, length of CE is plus the length of ED is equal to the length of CD. Okay? And that is going to be your segment addition. OK, um, now what's important though is again, remember going back to that substitution rule, right? Again, the end is we want to we prove that CD is equal to FG. So you know, one thing I can do is, well, CE is equal to FE, and ED is equal to EG. And FE and EG are equal to FG. So I don't know. Um, let's just try substituting this and see what happens. So I could also say that ED um, plus EG is also equal to CD because all I did is these two are equal to each other, or these two are congruent to each other, and these two are congruent to each other, right? That means they're equal in measure. So I can just use substitution. Okay? Then let's go and take a look at this. And you could say that if you look at again, well, we know that by substitution, ED plus EG is equal to CD. But by the segment addition theorem, we know that, um, oh, did I write that wrong? CE is equal to FE. Oops, I wrote that wrong. Sorry. There's FE and that's EG. So FE and EG. OK. But we also know that FE plus EG 
is equal to fg. Why are those equal to each other? Because the segment addition theorem. So now you have by substitution eg plus e, e I'm sorry fe plus eg is equal to cd by the segment addition theorem you have fe plus eg is equal to fg well therefore we can say that um, cd is equal to fg right and that's again by just using substitution now, they want to show that they are congruent. Well, if things are equal and measured, that means they're congruent. So I'm just going to rewrite this as CD is congruent to FG. Because since they're equal and measured, that means they're congruent. So I'm just going to say the definition of congruence. And when you're finished with your proof, you can use a nice little box. Or you can also just write QED. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write a two-column proof um, using segment addition theorem. Thanks.